G'day guys, my name's Nick and this is my channel Low Range Nick where I do videos about full driving, accessory fitting and maintenance for your full drive vehicle. So in today's video I'm going to be fitting a Harrop e-locker to the MUX. So I've got the Harrop e-locker here and I've also got a bearing kit from Terrain Tamer which gives you two side bearings for the diff and also some sealant to seal up the diff pumpkin and the axle seals. So firstly I'll do an unboxing. I'll show you guys what's in both the boxes, what you get in the kits, and the parts you're going to need to do the job. Alright guys, so now I'll show you what you get in the Harrop e-locker box. So on top here we've got our wiring harness. So it's got all the wiring for the e-locker, we've got the switch and everything. Here we have the actual e-locker underneath, so the diff centre. So this is the e-locking centre. So basically what we've got is our two wires there, so you've got a parent earth. So it's basically an electromagnet in here, which activates and deactivates to control the locker. Okay guys, so now I've unboxed the e-locker, I'll give you a quick overview of how it works. So for starters, the wiring harness they supply you with, it's pretty similar to a spotlight wiring harness. So you have a relay and you have a switch, and when you flick the switch, it supplies power down this line. So once you have supplied power down this line, it will energize this outer ring. So this outer ring is actually an electromagnet. And when that's energized, it will link to this second ring in here and turn that ring. And when it turns it, it will push these pins down. So there's pins all the way around the locker, which is linked to a gear inside here. So electromagnet, this secondary plate, and you can see the ramps here, when they link together and turn around, these pins will be evenly pushed down around the locker, and that will lock a locking ring inside to the side gear inside the housing on this side. So then the diff will be locked all together, so this axle will spin the same speed as that axle. And when you flick your e-locker switch off, de-energize the electromagnet which releases this plate which allows it to turn back to the position it's in now with the pins up which disengages the locking ring inside the locker. So that's a quick overview of how the Harrop e-locker works. If you do want to see a bit more in depth of how it works and inside the locker so the side gears and the spider gears and how they react when the locker is engaged then check out Harrop's uh, YouTube channel. They have quite a few good videos uh, with their display models with cutouts and you can actually see the gears inside and the pins and the locking ring and everything and how it really works. So now I'm going to put this back in the box and I'll show you guys the Terrain Tamer bearing kit uh, that I've got to do the job as well. This is the Terrain Tamer e-locker diff bearing kit. So in the kit you get two diff bearings, so two side bearings for the diff center. And you also get your three bond gasket maker. So this e-locker bearing kit from Terrain Tamer is not necessary to do the job, but it is a good idea to do. So basically replacing these two bearings, you know, if your vehicle has more than, you know, 60,000 Ks or so, it's probably a good idea when you're in there just to replace these bearings anyway to, you know, avoid any issues down the track. And also you get the proper gasket maker. So with the diff install, the diff center, you do have to remove the factory center and you have to press both the bearings off the side of that diff center to get to the shims underneath. So it is necessary to press those bearings off and it is a possibility that you may damage them. So whenever I fit e-lockers, I always recommend doing two new bearings and getting the proper gasket sealant to do the job. I'll just give you this quick clip here just so you can see the part numbers for the two kits. Alright guys, so this is the wiring harness unpackaged. So this is the plug that goes down to the rear diff. So to the diff lock. And then all of this wiring is usually separate and the conduit separate as well. So I've just put the conduit over that wiring and I've just put a bit of heat shrink on here just to stop it from sliding around. So this will run all the way to the back of the car to the e-locker. And this wiring harness then connects to our relay via the two pins here. So they're colour coded so you can't really stuff it up. So the purpley red wire goes to the purpley red on here and the black goes to the black. And they're just crimp connectors, so you can crimp those, heat shrink and you'll be sweet. So our other wire here, so this is our main battery supply power. 
So this either needs to be connected to the battery, so it's got constant 12 volt, or to a point in the vehicle, like a junction box or a main power supply wire, where it's always got power supply. Moving over this side, we've got the blue wire here, so this is our ignition 12 volt pickup. So we need this to have power supply when we turn our ignition on, and when we start the car, and when it's running, it's got to have power supply to this blue wire. So we need to find somewhere in the vehicle to connect that to. And our black wire is our earth, so you can connect that directly to the battery or to an earth point inside the vehicle. So you might notice that I've got this little green plug on here. So this is actually the plug for my Harrop e-locker switch, which I've wired up. So this is the switch that Harrop can supply you with. They're about 50 bucks or so, and it's specific for your vehicle. So originally it comes with this switch, um, but I've already changed it out and I'll show you guys uh, what wiring that needs to go to now so you can connect it up without any issues. So this is the plug end that comes with the switch. So it'll come with a little tail on it. So I'll put the switch on there. And then following the switch wiring, we go green to yellow. We go red to blue. We go black to black. So that's the same. And then once I've put this in the vehicle, I'll link the blue wire from my switch to my dash light illumination. So when my dash lights are on, the switch will illuminate as well. All right guys, so I think I've run through pretty much everything. So I think it's time to start installing the wiring harness to the vehicle. So that's the first step. So we'll get stuck into installing this to the vehicle and I'll show you exactly where I wire it up to. All right guys, so we're just in the driver's footwell now. I've just popped out this little coin pocket from up here so I can gain access to the fuses. So I've just been using my test light just to check which points have constant power supply uh, in the fuse box so I can wire up this, uh, you know, this pinky red wire which is my uh, constant battery power. So you can pick it up from the battery or you can pick it up from a constant power in the fuse box. So I'm just going to modify the wiring harness a bit. So if you stay tuned, I'll speed things up for a minute and I'll get it all um, modified and I'll show you guys exactly where I've wired it up to. Okay guys, so I've taken these two panels off now. I've got down to this 10mm bolt. So I'm going to use this 10mm bolt uh, as my earth point. So I've checked the continuity of this bolt to uh, chassis ground and it's actually really good. So that's the point I'm going to use because it's quite convenient. So I've just popped this trim panel forward just so I could get this blank out. So it's just got two little clips and then it pops out. And I've also wired up the illumination over here on the other side as well. So now we can put our wiring through and put our Harrop switch in. So that should just pop in there. And you can see how neat that looks. It looks factory. So that's pretty cool. So I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, now we can pop that trim in. There we go. All good. So I'll just show you guys in the fuse box what I've wired off. So this is the red or pink wire which is my constant battery power. So that's just got a female connector on it and I've just pushed it onto the pin in there. So that's constant battery. And then this pin here is my blue wire. So that's ignition switched. So you can see it's got the piggyback fuse in there, which is off a 20 amp fuse. So it's uh, three from the bottom and that's your ignition switch fuse. And if we go down here, you can see where I bring the earth. So I've got the earth up in there which is a good earth point. I've got the rear diff lock wiring here. So this is the wiring we're gonna to run to the back of the car. So I've just run it from outside the car uh, back in through the firewall. So there's a rubber grommet down here, which I've gone in. And then I've run it through into the passenger footwell. And then I've gone up underneath the carpet, underneath the center console, and then through into the driver's side. So this is the wiring from outside the vehicle. So I've crimped these two together to the relay. So now the power and earth is going to the outside of the vehicle and I just need to run that to the back of the car now. So all that's left now inside is to pretty much tidy everything up, zip tie it all up and cover it with conduit and uh, make it nice and neat. 
So I'm pretty much just gonna tie this wiring up in a ball for today. And I'm just gonna put it up there. And when I get to work tomorrow, I'm gonna run this to the back of the vehicle and zip tie it all up. Um, and then I can put my diff lock in. All right guys, so that's pretty much everything I'm gonna do tonight. I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time tidying up all that wiring, tucking it all up, zip tying it and covering it. And then tomorrow at work, I'm just gonna run that wire to the back of the car and then we can get stuck into the diff install. All right guys, welcome to Cooler Motors. So my boss has been good enough to let me come in on the weekend and pull apart the rear diff, put the e-locker in. So pretty much like I was saying last night, I just routed the wiring from the engine bay along the chassis to the back of the vehicle for the e-locker. And now I've just come in and ripped the rear wheels off. So now it's time to work on getting the left and right axles out of the vehicle. So now I've got to get the brakes off, the handbrake line, the wheel speed sensor, pull the tail shaft off, drain the diff. So stay tuned. Now I've got the diff center out, now I've just got to clean up this area where the diff seals really well and also on the diff and I've got to clean up where the axles seal as well on the housing and on the axle. So on both sides because um, we reseal this with new gasket maker with the silicon sealant and we put it all back together. So this is the factory of Suzu diff I've pulled out now and this is the Eaton diff center replacement so this is the e-locker replacement. So basically what we need to do is disassemble these bearing caps, get the diff center out of this the standard one we need to pull the ring gear off we need to put that ring gear onto this diff center and then I need to pull these side bearings off the carrier bearings off this diff center and get the shims in behind these bearings so these shims are what set the preload in this diff because they haven't got like a wind adjuster the preload on these carrier bearings are set via shims which are behind the bearings. so we need to get the center out press those bearings off get the shims off and put the shims onto the Eaton housing here, so onto the Eaton diff center, and then we can press our new bearings on that we have from Terrain Tamer. So let's rip it apart. Now I've got the factory center out of that diff. Now you can see I need to remove the ring gear and put the ring gear onto the e-locker. And I also need to press these bearings off with the press tool. And there's some shims under here which adjust the preload. So now I've got the e-locker pretty much all assembled. So I've got the new bearings on either side. I've got the correct shims in behind here. 
and I've got the ring gear on. So now I'm ready to put this back into the housing. Just checking the backlash there, so I'll zero out the dial gauge, move the ring gear forward, and we'll get the spec on here. So at the moment it's showing 0.16, which is perfect, so that's just within spec. Now I need to spin the crown wheel around, and then measure it again 180 degrees. So now our backlash is set and it's all good. I'm just going to recheck the tension on these caps, and also the tension on my ring gear bolts. Alright guys, so we're pretty much all back together now. I've put the brakes together, put the tail shaft on, put the diff in, tightened all the bolts and nuts, tightened the brakes, put those little brackets on the handbrake lines and the ABS sensors back in. I've also topped the diff up with oil, so now it's time to check that the locker works. So I've plugged the locker in as well. So the plug there on the top of the diff will go up to the relay and when we activate the switch, it should activate the locker. So let's put the wheels on and we'll check that it works. All right guys, so I ran out of space on my memory card, so I'm gonna finish the video off at home. So now I'm just gonna test out the locker and show you guys what an open diff looks like. And then I'll lock the diff in and I'll show you what a locked diff looks like. So let's test it out. All right guys, so this is an open diff now. So I've got the left wheel there chopped with a brick. So that's just emulating the left wheel is on the ground and our right wheel is in the air. So now I can spin freely this wheel on the right side and there's no resistance. So basically all of the drive is going to the wheel that's in the air and the wheel that has no traction at all. So now I'll lock the diff in and show you guys the difference. All right guys, so now I've activated the diff lock. Now we'll see how it reacts. So you can see now that it's turning both the wheels, turning both rear wheels and it's pretty much spat that brick out. So it's got traction on both wheels, 
no matter what happens. And if you change direction, you see that it also follows. So you have traction at both rear wheels, whether you go forward or reverse. So now we've got traction to both rear wheels whenever that diff lock is engaged. Well, thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And also stay tuned for more full driving and accessory fitting videos. Cheers, guys.